Oh, I nearly dropped it then. Have a look at this. It's my ginormous jelly mountain. I just got it from my local jelly superstore. Now, if I put it down here, it'll be nice and safe. <laughs> oh. oh, there was the odd wobble on the way home. But look, I haven't dropped a jot of jelly. <laughs> And I tell you what, my Jelly Mountain has given me a wonderful, wobbly idea. Let's try something. Try making your very own wonderful, wobbly picture. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. A plastic plant pot. Some pipe cleaners. Some coloured card. A felt tip pen and some scissors. And some sticky tape. <laughs> oh. You'll also need some air drying clay, which you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got it. <laughs> There's my air drying clay. I'll put it there for later. Now, to make a wonderful wobbly picture, like this one here, <laughs> get a piece of coloured paper and draw whatever you want to wobble in your picture. But this is going to be a bird flying in the clouds. You first draw a bird shape. <laughs> there we go, a lovely bird shape. Now, how about we get some white paper and draw two fluffy cloud shapes? Now, it's a good idea if one of the cloud shapes is smaller than the other. And lastly, let's get some yellow paper, because we're going to draw a yellow sun. And for that, we need to draw a circle. Now, here's a good tip. If you want to draw a circle, draw around something that's round. And when you've drawn all of your shapes, cut them out. But be careful, scissors are sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Next, get some pipe cleaners that match the colours of your shapes. So that will be a grey pipe cleaner for the bird, two white pipe cleaners for our fluffy clouds, and a yellow pipe cleaner for our sun. Let's turn over our shapes now and then stick on our pipe cleaners to the back with sticky tape. <laughs> Next, wedge a ball of air drying clay. Here we go. Into a plastic plant pot. There you go, this small one will work. And let's put it in, and you have to push down and squeeze quite firmly. <laughs> right, that's in there OK. Now it's time for the fun part. We're going to make a wobbly picture. You can arrange your pieces however you like, but how about we put the bird flying in front of the clouds with the sun in the background? Now, to do that, let's get our big cloud first, and we're going to push it into the back of the clay here. Now let's get our sun, and we can push that just in front of the big cloud. Now, it's a good idea as you arrange your different pieces to make the pieces nearer the front slightly shorter. So let's get our bird and our small cloud here and just very, very carefully snip a little bit off the bottom of the pipe cleaner. And about the same off the little cloud. Now, let's push our little cloud in next, just in front of the sun. Because it's shorter, it means we can see all of the pieces. And now, last but not least, let's put our bird flying in front of the clouds. Now we can gently bend the pipe cleaners so we can see everything. Look at this! It's a wonderful, wobbly picture. And you can make all sorts of pictures wobble. How about a wobbly aeroplane flying through a wobbly sky? An underwater wobbly sea picture with lots of wobbly fish and wobbly seaweed. Or even a sunflower with a wobbly bee. And those pictures remind me of my jelly here. <laughs>
all wibbly and wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, not a sneeze now. And my jelly! Jelly everywhere. I'll just sort that out. Oh, there, that's better. <laughs> I've got something to show you. Prepare to be amazed. These are my footprints, and they've got a mind of their own. Go on then, off we go. Can you guess what the footprints are making? Any ideas yet? Oh, a dinosaur! Well done, footprints. I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty. Now, take a look at this. This watery fish picture is very easy to do, but looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need white paper, coloured felt tip pens, a paintbrush and some water. Start by drawing some green seaweed in the corners, some yellow sand at the bottom, and now draw and colour a fish in the middle. Then colour in the rest of the picture to make the sea. Now here's the magic part. Dip a paintbrush in water and brush over your pen drawing. Look how the colours start to run. Leave it until it's nearly dry and draw round the outline of your fish to finish your underwater picture. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Fantastic! Now take a look at this. I like making pictures out of all sorts of things, so... Let's make a picture out of... Pencil sharpeners! Woo! What are they going to make? It's a beetle! Now, oh, I'm just reading this book about birds. It's very interesting. As well as being able to swim and fly, birds can also sing. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I wonder if they can do anything else. Do you think they can play games? Hmm. On my beak, Mr. Penguin! Goal! <laughs> no, that's taking it too far. Birds playing games, honestly. <laughs> or is it? Flapping feathers, I'm having an idea! Let's make something! Make a fantastically funny bird hoop game to play with your friends. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a large washing liquid bottle with a large handle. <laughs> some tissue paper and a pen. Some feathers. Some paint. Some gloopy PVA glue and a colourful paper plate. Whoa! Now we also need some play sand, which you can find in a toy shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got it! <laughs> Our play sand. Now have a look at this funny bird hoop game. And here's how it works. You have a hoop, you have a funny bird. Throw the hoop over the bird. Oh, 
<laughs> Hooray! It's a fantastic game. Now, to make one, you need to start off with a large washing liquid bottle like this, and you need to make sure that it's nice and clean. Now, it's a good idea to get an adult to help you with this bit. Then, unscrew the top, and we're going to very carefully pour in some play sand. Now, we need to pour in just enough sand to make it nice and heavy so the bottle doesn't topple over. Now we can screw the lid back on tightly. Now we're going to cover the entire bottle in ripped up pieces of tissue paper and a very special gloopy mixture, which is made out of half gloopy glue and half water. Let's give it a mix. There we go, it's nicely mixed up now. And we're going to make sure that we cover the whole bottle in the gloopy mixture and the pieces of tissue paper. And when we're finished, we'll leave it to dry. When it's nice and dry, we can start painting. How about we paint on two large white dots for eyes, a nice bright orange beak, and then you can paint the rest of the bird whatever colour you like. It's up to you. But I think I might do this bird blue. When the paint is dry, we can add some details with a black pen. And for a finishing touch, let's give our bird some nice feathery wings. So for that, of course, we need our feathers here. Here they are. They're all ready to be put on with some gloopy glue. Now press on your feathers like this and then hold them down in place until they dry. And then do the same on the other side. What a fantastic feathery effect. He looks great. Let's just move our bird over to here because now we need to make a hoop with a paper plate. A nice coloured one like this looks really good. We also need a ball of modelling clay and a very sharp pencil. And what we're going to do is put the ball of modelling clay underneath the plate like that. And then very carefully with the sharp pencil, we're going to push through the middle of the plate into the clay to make a hole. Then if we take out the pencil, remove the clay like that, we're left with a plate with a hole in the middle. Now this hole will help us cut out the middle of the plate. Now we're going to cut very carefully all the way around here. Now this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. <laughs> here we go. Now be very careful with your scissors, because they're sharp, you know. Oh yes. <laughs> You can make lots of rings, so as many people as you like can play. Fantastic! And you don't have to stop there. How about trying some other ideas? This one has a green body and a winking eye. And this one's a multicoloured bird with multicoloured feathers. Or you can use a much smaller bottle for a glittery baby bird. Now all that's left to do is have a game. Now remember, the aim of the game is to throw the hoop over the bird. Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, that was close. Hey, I did it. Well done, Mr. Maker. Thank you, Mr. Crazy Bird. It was great fun playing with you. Time. Oh, great! It's Minute Maid time! 
here's what we're going to make today. A crazy peg bug. So I better make it snappy. And to make one of these, you will need a pair of scissors, a wooden peg, four pipe cleaners, some felt tip pens, some white stickers, and that's it. But do you think you can make this in just one minute? No way. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Start the clock. Let's go. Get the peg and your felt tip pens and start colouring in stripes. Now, you can use whatever colours you like, but I'm going to use black and orange. There we go. There's the black done. Let's do the orange. There we go. Do the other side as well. There. That's looking very good. Now let's get three of the pipe cleaners and if we hold them together and just feed them in like this, we can bend them into shape to make legs. Halfway! There are all the legs bent into shape. Now let's get the other pipe cleaner and we'll wind it around this end to make the antennae. There we go, fantastic. And now we just need to add some eyes with these white stickers. There we go, there's one white sticker. And there's the other one, and we can add black dots on as well. There! I did it! Only just! And if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of crazy peg bugs. How about a purple and yellow one with purple pipe cleaners for legs? Or a black and gold stripy peg bug? with black pipe cleaner legs. Crazy peg bugs made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Add stripes to the peg with felt tip pens. Put the pipe cleaners into the peg to make legs. Twist a pipe cleaner at the front to make antennae. Add white stickers for eyes and draw a face with a black pen to finish off your crazy peg bug. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> now, take a look at this. This brilliant iceberg picture is great fun to make and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need kitchen roll, gloopy PVA glue, paint brushes, scissors, a pen, white paint, crayons, a pencil, coloured paper and some stickers. First, draw some pointy iceberg shapes on blue paper with a white crayon. Now, fill in the icebergs with gloopy glue. Place some crumpled kitchen roll over the top. Add more glue on top of that and leave it to dry. Now, draw some different sized penguin shapes with a white pencil on some black paper. Cut the penguins out and stick on torn out bits of white paper for the penguins' tummies. Add some orange paper triangles for beaks and white stickers for eyes. Use a black pen to make the pupils. Then stick the penguins onto the icebergs. Finally, add some snow with dots of white paint as a finishing touch. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Fantastic! But it looks very cold. Hey, it's Minute Make Time! It's Minute Make Time and here's what we're going to make today. A pencil bug. Aye, aye, Mr Bug. <coughs> now, to make a pencil bug, you will need two long pieces of wool, four short pieces of wool, a sharp pencil, plus some googly eyes and some air drying clay. Now you can find them in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> I've got them. Right, here are the googly eyes and I'm going to leave the air drying clay in the bag for the minute. Now, do you think it's possible to make this? In just one minute? Not a chance. Oh, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. 
Right, let's get two lumps of air drying clay, one slightly bigger than the other. There we go. I'm just going to rip a little bit off the big bit and make a smaller ball in one hand and a smaller ball in the other. Yep, and put those to the side. Now, these are going to be the head and the body. So let's squidge those together like that. There we are. The head goes on top. Now I'm going to give our pencil bug some hair like this. I'm going to push it in with the pencil. There we go. Now, if I turn it over, there's a one arm on there, that side. Give him an arm on the other side as quickly as I can. Right, now he needs some legs, doesn't he? He needs some legs, so let's give him two. There we go, let's give him some legs there. There's one leg and there's the other. Right, he's looking good, he's looking good. Let's give him some eyes, just squidge those in. There's one and there's two. And now we can give him feet with these smaller balls there. There's one and there's two. And then we can just push a pencil in the bottom. That was close. That was close. And when your pencil bug is dry and you've got more than a minute, you could paint it a nice bright colour and maybe cover it in gloopy PVA glue to keep everything stuck together. Plus, there are lots of other ideas you could try too. How about a stripy orange and red one? You can even make one with lots of arms. Ah. Pencil bugs made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Roll two large balls and two small balls of the clay. Put the large balls together to make a head and a body. Push in the wall with a pencil to make the hair, arms and legs. Stick on your googly eyes. Add the two small balls for feet. Now you can stick your pencil bug onto your pencil. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Time. Wow, it's minute make time. Come on, everyone. <laughs> Yes, it's Minute Make Time, and this is what we're going to make today. A flappy ear card. Look at that. It's from me. Now, to make one of these, you will need a square of coloured card, three white stickers, a pair of scissors and a black pen. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? You're having a laugh. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to move very quickly, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get our square of paper and fold it in half like that there. And then with our scissors, we can cut along the fold. Be careful. I'm being careful, Toki. There we go. This will give us two smaller triangles. Now, if we fold both corners down like that and like that, we get our two flappy ears. Now I'm going to draw a nose and two eyes with my black pen onto my white stickers. There's the nose. That's just coloured in completely in black, that one. And then the eyes are two dots. There's one and there's two. Right, let's put these on very quickly, if we can. There we go. Right, come on then, nose. Here we go. There's our nose. Brilliant. Now we need one eye. There's one eye. There it is. There. Right. Let's give him a face. There, there. There, 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 and there, and there! I've done it! Only just! Oh, yeah, that was close. But this ear card is for you, Toki. So I'm going to write my name here. <laughs> there you go, Toki. You're too kind. And if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of flappy cards. This one's a rabbit with big teeth and a little pink nose. And how about this spotty pig with a big snout? <coughs> Ear cards made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Take a square piece of coloured card and fold it in half. Then cut along the fold to make two triangle shapes. Fold down the top corners of one of the triangles to make ears. Put on stickers for a nose and eyes. Add details with a black pen and then write your message behind the ear on your ear card. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Oh, I'd love to go on holiday, especially an adventure holiday, like a super jungle safari. <gasps>
Jungles are really exciting. There are so many things to see. Look, there's an elephant. And there's a snake. And oh, there's a ferocious plant. Oh, oh, I wouldn't like to meet one of those close up. I'm getting out of here. Oh, 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 what a dream. But it gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Make a super snappy jungle plant with terrific teeth. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> An empty yogurt pot with a bendy corner. <laughs> some green pipe cleaners and some coloured paper. <laughs> Aha! Some paint. <laughs> Some sticky tape and some glue. A plant pot and a lump of modelling clay. Whoa! Now, to make your very own snappy plant... Ooh, you need to get a clean yoghurt container with a bendy corner like this. Now, you might want to ask an adult to help you find one of these. And then you're going to fold along that crease there like that. And now we need to get four pipe cleaners like this. And whilst holding them all together, twist them up. There, but don't twist all the way to the end because you need two pieces on this side to stick to the small corner of your yoghurt container and these other two pieces to stick over here to the larger side of the container. And we can stick them in place with some sticky tape. <laughs> now you can paint the inside of your yogurt pot red and the outside of it green like this. Now to paint them, we're going to make two painty mixtures that are made up of half paint and half gloopy glue. Let's give them a mix. This will help the painty mixture really stick to the yoghurt pot. There we go. Now we can start painting. When it's dry, it should look like this. Green on the outside and red on the inside. Let's just put it to one side for now because we're going to get a brown piece of paper like this and we're going to fold it in half and then we're going to make a snip just here along that folded edge. Be careful when you use scissors because they're sharp, you know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. There. There we go. Now if we open it up, we've got ourselves a little hole. And that hole is perfect for pushing our pipe cleaners through. So we can push them through that hole, like that, feeding it through so it's about halfway through. And then with the pipe cleaner this end, we can just roll it up into a kind of rough ball shape and then scrunch the brown paper all around it. Just scrunching it into a tight ball. Right, I'm just going to pop it down for a little while now because we need to get a little plant pot, like that, and a ball of modelling clay. Now, if you haven't got modelling clay, don't worry, you could use a pebble, because this is going to go in the plant pot and weigh it down so our plant doesn't topple over. Let's get some gloopy glue and put in a good dollop. Now we can bring back our plant and push it into the plant pot. Very nice. It's starting to take shape. Let's just move it over here for now because we need to draw some teeth and some leaves. For that we need, of course, white paper or card for the teeth. And for the leaves we need green paper or card. Now we can cut all of these pieces out. Now we need to glue the leaves onto the pipe cleaners. <laughs> and we need to stick the teeth inside the yoghurt pot too. 
<laughs> and now you have a very snappy plant. <laughs> Ooh. Or you could try some other ideas. How about a purple spotty plant with yellow stickers for spots? Or even a really big tropical plant with lots of teeth. All fantastic ideas. Snappy plants. Give them a go. They look terrifying, don't they? <laughs> but you're not scary, are you? I think you'll find that I am. Hey, careful, you. Now, take a look at this. What a brilliant rainbow pastel picture. It's great fun to make and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured card, chalk pastels, scissors, a black pen, a glue stick and white stickers. Draw large wavy lines on one half of a piece of coloured card with chalk pastels like this. Then on the other side of the card, draw more lines but in a different pattern. Now draw a big fish on one pattern and a baby fish on the other and cut them out. Stick on white stickers for eyes, then add details with a black pen. Next draw some seaweed with a green coloured pastel onto some sea coloured card. Now glue both your fish onto your background. And you've made a fantastic brightly coloured underwater scene. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that effective? It makes me think of the sea. <laughs> oh, hello, everyone. Watch this. I wonder what they're up to. I'm grey. I am red. I am orange. Everybody. See you next time. Now it's time to frame it. Frame it. Frame it. Now take a look at this. What a fantastic sawdust picture. It's great fun to do and makes a picture so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need some coloured paper, wrapping paper, gloopy PVA glue, scissors, a thin black pen, a brush, googly eyes, buttons and sawdust, which you can buy from a pet shop. To make your picture, draw the outline of a dog onto some coloured paper, or you can draw any animal you like. Now cover your drawing with gloopy glue and sprinkle sawdust all over it. Shake off any extra sawdust and sweep it up. Then carefully cut your sawdust dog out and stick it onto some colourful wrapping paper. And why not make your dog a collar by sticking on a thin strip of wrapping paper like this. Stick on a button to finish off the collar and add another button for the nose. Last of all, stick on two googly eyes to finish off your super sawdust dog. Doesn't it look amazing? What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Great! And as well as sawdust, I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. Great! It's Minute Make time! Here's what we're going to make today. A pipe cleaner mouse! Say cheese, Mr Mouse! That's how mice say cheese. Honest. And to make a pipe cleaner mouse, you will need... A pair of scissors, a pencil, a pink pipe cleaner, three white pipe cleaners and some glue. Oh, we'll also need some googly eyes and you can get those from an art and craft shop. Wait right there. I've got them. Yes, here are my googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? You're having a laugh. Really, Toki? 
Well, I think I can do it. I'll have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Start the clock! Here we go. Let's get the pink pipe cleaner and very carefully snip it in half like that. And then we're going to bend this half up like that to make a nose. Now we need a white pipe cleaner and we're going to wrap it around the pencil like this. There we go. If you slide it off, this is going to be the body of our mouse. There we go. That goes up to the nose. Then with this other pink piece here, we're going to fold it into ear shapes. There we go. There's one ear and there's the other ear. And we can pop that up and squeeze it into position. There we go. Our mouse has got two ears. Now we need to get these other two white pipe cleaners and wrap them around the pencil. Foster! There's one. Foster! And there's the other one. Wrap it around. This is the rest of the mouse's body. And then slide that off and slide it onto our mouse like that. Curl the tail up. And then we need to stick on two eyes. One bit of glue there, one bit of glue there. There's one eye, and there is the other eye. I've done it! Only just! That was close, and I made a little mouse in a minute. <laughs> and if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of pipe cleaner animals. Try making a pipe cleaner lion. This one's got long legs and loops for feet. Or how about this stripy caterpillar? It's got lots of small pipe cleaners for legs. A pipe cleaner creature made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Take a pink pipe cleaner and bend the end to make a mouse nose. Twist the white pipe cleaner around a pencil. This makes the mouse's head. Slide it onto the pink pipe cleaner all the way up to the nose. Twist another pink pipe cleaner into the shape of two ears and attach them to the head. Twist and attach two more white pipe cleaners to make the mouse's body. And finally, add two googly eyes to complete your pipe cleaner mouse. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Yeah. Hey, it's minute make time. <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today, a cup nose. Oh, and I knows this is going to be a good make because it looks like a dog's nose. <laughs> now, to make this, you will need a pair of scissors, a sharp pencil, a black pen, two pieces of wool, a ball of modeling clay, a fluffy pom-pom, a paper cup, some card and a glue stick. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, I think I can do it, but I'm going to have to move very, very quick. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Get the paper cup and a ball of modelling clay and a sharp pencil and make a hole either side like that. There's one hole. Be careful! I'm being careful, don't you worry, Toki and a hole on the other side like that. And then we're going to get our pieces of wool and poke those through, one through that side, like that. Come on, through you go. There we go. That's it, and I'm going to tie a knot here, like that. That's on one side, and then tie a knot on the other side. Halfway there! Halfway already, goodness me! Just tie a knot here, there we go. Right, now get some glue. Put that on top and put the pom-pom on top there. There, that's that done. Now we're going to draw a tongue on a piece of card like that. And then very carefully cut it out. Oh, got to be quick. There we go, round we go. And then I can glue this on to our dog cup. I did it! Only just... And if you've got more than a minute, you can paint and decorate your cup nose however you like. Oh, I painted this one in brown just like a dog's nose. Oh, and look at this one here. It's painted like a stripy tiger's nose. Ooh, or how about a mouse with whiskers and a pink nose? Ooh, cup noses made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Carefully make two holes in the sides of a paper cup with a pencil. Push wool through the holes and tie a knot. 
glue a pom-pom onto the top of the cup, draw a tongue on red paper, cut it out and stick it onto the cup, and your paper cup nose is ready. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Oh, what terrible weather! Oh, hello! Nice to see you again. Oh, it's awful out there. Oh, no! I forgot to wipe my feet! Oh, what a mess! There are leaves everywhere. But I tell you what, though, they've given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try branching out with a brilliant leaf print picture. Let's make it, as well as leaves, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. Come on. Some paper. Some paint. And some paintbrushes and a glue stick. Whoa! Now, to make a leaf print picture like this one here, take your green paper and start to paint a hedgehog's head. Paint a grey triangle because this makes a great snout shape. Look, I've added some black fork shapes for the hedgehog's feet and blended in some brown paint to his snout. Now it's time for the fun bit. Let's put down some old paper or newspaper as this can get a bit messy. Now we're going to take a leaf and turn it upside down so it's got the bumpy side facing up. And then we're going to paint some brown paint on top of it. Now, if we get some white paper and pick up our leaf very carefully and place it paint side down, we can push very gently on top of it. And when we pick it up, we get a leaf print. Wow, look at that! Now carry on doing this until you've covered your paper in prints. Then, when the prints are dry, cut each leaf out. But be careful, because scissors are sharp. <laughs> now we can give our hedgehog a body. We're going to stick the leaf prints down with glue, but make sure all the leaves are pointing outwards to look like the hedgehog's spikes. Let's do it. Finally, finish off with some black paint and give your hedgehog two eyes and a nose. It's Harry the Hedgehog, printed with the leaves. He loves to play in. <laughs> Keep it down, will you? I've only just woken up. Oh, sorry, Harry. You can choose different types of leaves and try some other ideas too. How about a stag? It's made by painting a stag's body and printing antlers with curvy leaves. Or even a lion, which is made by painting a lion's face and printing its mane with spiky leaves. Ooh. Let's make a picture out of... Game counters! Woo! <laughs> Can you guess what it's going to be? It's a unicorn! Now it's time I did some washing up. Now take a look at this. 
This nighttime picture is made in a really clever way, and it looks so effective you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured card, dark paper, white chalk, black paint, a pencil and a paintbrush. First, paint a thick layer of black paint all over the card and leave it to dry. Then take a piece of dark coloured paper and completely cover it with white chalk. Place the chalk side down on top of the dry painted card. And now you can draw a nighttime picture in a very clever way. Draw whatever you want. This is going to be a cat outside in the moonlight. Add a long fence and the moon. And let's add a tree. Then slowly lift it off to reveal where the white chalk has rubbed onto the black painted card underneath giving you a fantastic effect. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that clever? Ooh! It's Minute Make Time! Come on! Here's what we're going to make today. A pencil bug! Oh, Mr Pencil Bug, I'm woolly pleased to see you. <laughs> now, to make one of these, you will need some sticky tack, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, a pencil, a short piece of wool, and a very long piece of wool. Now, we'll also need some googly eyes. Now, you can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Here they are. Our googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, well, I think I can. I'm going to have to be very quick, though. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Stop the clock! Here we go. Get the long piece of wool and start wrapping it around your hand like this. Round and round it goes. And then carefully slide it off your hand. Get the small piece of wool and then tie it in the middle like that. There we go. Tie it nice and tight. There. And then get a pair of scissors and very carefully cut through the loops there on both sides. There's one side. And here's the other side now. There we go, that gives us a fluffy bug. Now we need to glue on these googly eyes, like this. There's one googly eye. There's the other googly eye. And then if we get our sticky tack on the end of our pencil, there it is, we can push it on to our pencil bug. Phew, I made it. Only just. <laughs> yes, and if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of pencil bugs. How about a brilliant blue one? Or even this big one made out of multicoloured wool. Pencil bugs made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Wrap a long piece of wool around your hand and carefully take it off. Tie a smaller piece of wool around the middle of it. Cut the loops of wool around the edges and glue on googly eyes. Stick it on top of the pencil with sticky tack to complete your woolly pencil bug. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> I'm just reading this book all about the different animals in the world. Now, if you could be an animal or a different type of creature, what would you be? Hmm. I think I'd be a brilliant bird flying through the clouds. But there's only one problem with that. I can't fly. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd make a very good bird after all. Although it does give me a great idea. Let's make something. Why not make your own brilliant bird's nest out of string? Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Some string and an old plastic bowl. Some paints. Some pom-poms. 
some PVA gloopy glue and some shredded tissue paper. Orange card, white stickers and a pen. Oh! Now to make a brilliant, brightly coloured bird's nest, like this one here, you first have to start off with three bowls. There's one. Two and three. Now, in these three bowls, we're going to put a large bundle of string in each one. Now we need to add our paint. You can choose whatever colours you like, but I'm going to choose green, red and yellow. Let's put some green into the first bowl. Now the red and the yellow in the third bowl. And now into each bowl, we're going to add a dollop of gloopy glue. Now, let's give them all a mix. Now we'll move our bowls over to here. And then we're going to bring in an old plastic bowl like this. Now make sure you check with an adult first that it's okay to use it. Then turn it upside down on a tray like this. Then we're going to cover the whole bowl in special gloopy string. Let's start with the green string. <laughs> now we can add the red and the yellow, but it's a good idea because I've got such mucky fingers to wipe your hands first. Make sure you cover the bowl in lots of layers of different coloured string. <laughs> like this. Then you can leave it to dry overnight. Good night. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> when it's all dry, you can very carefully push the bowl out. There we are. And you're left with a lovely nest. Oh, all that's missing now is a bird. Hmm. Here it is. And to make a bird, you need two pom-poms. Now, it looks good if you use one large one and one small one. And we're going to glue those together. There we go. Now we can add some eyes to our bird by using white stickers. Add black dots with a pen for pupils and stick them on. All that's missing now is the bird's beak. So for that, we need a piece of orange card. And we're going to cut out a triangle shape. Be careful, though, because scissors are sharp. Oh, oh, oh. And then stick it on to your bird. Now you can put your bird into its new home. So let's bring our nest back in and make it nice and comfortable by adding some lovely soft shredded tissue paper. And then the bird can sit in the middle. Lovely, a beautiful bird in its brilliant new home. And you can also try some other ideas. How about a glittery bird's nest made by sprinkling glitter on your gloopy string? Or even a really big bird's nest with lots of birds in it. Oh, great. Oh, great. It's minute make time. Come on. <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. Brilliant bugs on a stick. And for this, you will need a stick and some pipe cleaners that have been cut into 18 small pieces. We'll also need some air drying clay and some googly eyes. Now you can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. Whew. I've got them. Here they are. Let's have a look. We've got one large ball, one medium sized ball and one small ball. And we've also got six googly eyes, and they're made up of two large googly eyes, two medium-sized ones, and then two smaller ones. Great! Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Really, Toki? Well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute! 
Get your stick and then squidge on the balls of clay. That's the large one at the front, the middle size one in the middle, and the small one on the end like that. And then start putting in the legs. Now that's six legs for each creature, three on each side. There we go. Let's get these in as quickly as possible. There we go, in you go, brilliant. Three for this one. We'll oh, better squish that one down a bit more, there we go. And now the other side. Here we go. Three legs here. Faster, faster! Oh, I know I'm going as quick as I can, Toki! Okay, there we go. And now we need to put on the eyes. Two big eyes for the big bug. Two medium-sized eyes for the medium-sized bug. And two small eyes for the small bug. I've done it! Only just... Phew, that was close, wasn't it? And if you've got more than a minute, you can paint your bugs on a stick and cover them in a layer of gloopy PVA glue to make them even stronger. In fact, you can decorate your bugs however you like. These bugs have been painted in different colours and covered in glitter. Oh, very sparkly. Bugs on sticks made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Push three different sized balls of clay onto a stick. Then push short bits of pipe cleaner into the clay for the legs. Finally stick on googly eyes to finish your bugs on a stick. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> I'm just about to have a look in my doodle drawers. There's lots of fantastic things in here, all great for making art with. Let's have a look. <laughs> Aha, there are pens. There are pencils. There are pears. Pears? No, that's not right. Hang on, let's have another go. There are pens. There are pencils. There are pineapples. Pineapples? That's not right either. Let's have one more try. Right. There are pens. There are pencils. And there are plates. <laughs> Plates? Oh no! You can't make anything with a polystyrene plate. Or can you? Hang on to your handlebars. I'm having an idea. Let's try something. Try printing a perfect picture by painting on a polystyrene plate. Let's make it. As well as our polystyrene plate, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> A pencil and a pair of scissors. Some paint and a small sponge. And a piece of card. Now, to make a plate print like this one here, you will need a polystyrene plate. Now we need to cut off the rim all the way around the edge. But be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> now we can draw a design on the smoothest side of this plate by pressing firmly with a pencil. Let's draw a crocodile. But don't press too hard though or you'll tear the plastic. Now use a small sponge to dab paint all over the picture. There we go. Next, press the wet side down onto some coloured card and press firmly. Lift it up. And there you have the perfect plate print. What a clever crocodile. And it's so easy to do. There are lots of other designs you could try as well. How about a fish in the sea? 
a boat on the waves, or even a plane. You can print anything with a polystyrene plate. Oh, yeah. oh I wonder who that could be. <laughs> There's a parcel for me. It's a huge present! How exciting! Let's unwrap it! <laughs> it's a grape! Oh. oh, there's a note with it. Hello, I hope you're well. I was eating a lovely bunch of grapes and I thought you might like one. Lots of love, Auntie Mildred. Oh, oh well, <laughs> thanks Auntie Mildred. Mmm, very nice, but I think you might have used too much wrapping paper. Still, all this wrapping paper gives me a great idea. <laughs> Let's try something. Try making a brilliant, brightly coloured wrapping paper picture. <laughs> Let's make it. As well as some wrapping paper, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> Some white stickers. Some coloured paper. A pen and a ruler. And some glue and some scissors. Woo! <laughs> right, now to make a brilliant coloured wrapping paper picture, like this one here. First, get yourself a piece of brightly coloured paper. Now, this can be whatever colour you like, but I think this orange will look good because this is going to be our background. Then, take a different colour piece of paper and cut a strip to run across the bottom like this. Now, be very careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Glue it into place. There, lovely. Now, let's put a sun in the sky. And for that, we need to draw around something that's round, like the outside of a paper cup. Let's cut it out very carefully. <laughs> There's our sun, so let's glue it in position. There! Now for the fun bit. Let's get some scraps of coloured wrapping paper. And we can draw whatever we want onto it. This is going to be an elephant. Let's start with a curvy body and a long trunk, four legs, and of course a funny tail. And we can draw the ears on a different scrap of wrapping paper. This will make our elephant look really colourful. Now let's cut all of our elephant parts out. Now you can glue your elephant down onto the background paper. Now we can give our elephant some eyes with white stickers. Make these eyes really stand out by getting a black pen and putting a dot in the middle for a pupil and giving them a nice outline. And you can add something else to the picture. Let's add a brightly coloured mouse. So let's grab some other scraps of wrapping paper in different colours and draw a teardrop shape for the mouse's body. There we go. And now let's draw the ears and the tail on a completely different coloured paper. There's one ear, two ears and a tail. Now let's carefully cut out all of our mouse parts. Then glue the mouse onto your picture. 
add a white sticker for its eye. And again, with your black pen, add a pupil in the middle and draw around the outline. There! Doesn't it look fantastic? And the great thing is that you can use all sorts of different wrapping paper to create all sorts of different hilarious pictures. The brighter, the better. Take a look at these. This is a cuddly cat sitting on a cosy cushion with a little spotty bird. Or how about this tall stripy dog and his sausage dog friend? They're all great ideas, but I think the elephant and mouse picture is my favourite. <laughs> oh, Mr Elephant, wait! Come back! It's only a mouse! Now, take a look at this. This underwater picture is very effective and you don't even need a paintbrush to make it. What's more, it looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need white paper, card, strips of blue and green tissue paper, some water, sponges, black paint, scissors, a pen, a pencil and some modelling clay. Start by wetting the white paper with a sponge. Then lay blue and green tissue paper strips across the paper all the way to the bottom like this. Now wet the tissue paper with a sponge and then put it to one side. Take a piece of card and use a pen to draw the outline of an underwater creature. This is going to be a shark with a pointy nose, two fins and a tail. Then pierce a hole in the card using a pencil and some modelling clay. Use the hole to help you carefully cut the shark shape out. When the tissue paper has dried, peel it off and you will see that the colour from the tissue paper has transferred to the paper underneath. Then lay the shark shape on top and dab black paint through the hole onto the paper behind. Leave it to dry and then remove the shark shape to reveal a shark swimming underwater. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that great? And now for a messy picture. Watch this. What do you think it is? It's a squirrel! <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> I'm just giving my plants some water. Hi, Mr Maker. Ooh. Was that you? No? <laughs> it's me! I'm down here. Oh, yes, Mr Worm. What are you doing down there? <laughs> Getting wet. Sorry about that. That's enough water for now. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Good old Mr Worm. And seeing him gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Surprise your friends with a can of wiggly, wriggly worms. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. An old rubber glove. A cardboard tub with a lid. A pen, a pencil, a glue stick and some paper. Some silver wrapping paper and a ruler. Whoa! Now, to make your very own can of worms, like this one here, you first have to take the bottom out of a cardboard tub with a lid, like this one. Now, these bottoms will normally just push out like that, but if you find this tricky, you can always ask an adult to help you. Go. Now we need to get our silver wrapping paper and lay the tub at the bottom of it there and with a black pen just make a little mark to show how tall it is. There we go. And then move it along to the other side of the paper and make a mark there as well. There! 
Now we're going to get our ruler and join these marks up. Then we need to cut along this line, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh. Now we're going to glue along the short edge of our wrapping paper. Plenty on there. And then stick it to the edge of our tub. There we go. And we can roll our tub along like that and then glue along this edge as well. And then stick it down. Now for the lid. Cover it in glue on both sides and then wrap a piece of wrapping paper around it. You can cover the inside of the lid by gluing on scraps of silver wrapping paper like this. Now, with a black pen, let's draw a line right down the middle of the tin and some circles like that. And now for the wriggly, wiggly worms. We need to draw two eyes for each worm. Now there's a worm on every finger, so that's five worms and two eyes for each worm. That's, that's 10 eyes. <laughs> Let's get some white paper and start drawing them. There. Ten eyes. Now we need to carefully cut these out. There are the eyes. Now for the next bit, it makes it easier if you put your rubber glove on your hand. There we go, because now we can glue on our eyes. Now, with a black pen, we can give each of our wiggly worms a mouth. And there you have it, five wiggly, wriggly worms. And then put this inside the tin. There we go. And then put on the lid. There, now you're ready to surprise someone. <laughs> oh, you could try. Ooh, spotty worms made by putting stickers onto your rubber glove. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> disco worms made by adding feathers and sequins to your rubber glove. Now, take a look at this. This fantastic underwater picture is made using cardboard and paint and it looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured paint, cardboard strips, coloured paper, glue, a white sticker, a black pen and some scissors. Start by squirting two yellow blobs of paint at the bottom of the paper like this. Then dip the cardboard in the paint and drag it along the paper, making wavy patterns. This is going to make the sand. Now do the same again with another piece of cardboard and blue and white paint. This is going to be the sea. Let the white and blue colours mix together. This is all part of the effect. How about some seaweed? Squirt four blobs of green paint on top of the yellow sand like this. Now dip the cardboard in the green paint and drag it upwards in a wavy, weedy pattern. Squirt a blob of light green paint in the middle, but this time use the edge of the cardboard to make spiky seaweed. Now, whilst your picture is drying, draw a fish shape on coloured paper. Add some details with a black pen and a white sticker for an eye. Then carefully cut out your fish and glue it in position. An underwater sea picture, and you don't even need a paintbrush. What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. Time. It's minute make time. 
Yes, it's minute make time, and here's what we're going to make today. A pine cone creature. Look, it's a pine cone bird. Now, to make one of these, you will need a black pen, a glue stick, of course, a pine cone, some coloured card, some scissors, some feathers and some googly eyes that you can find in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Right here are our googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Not a chance. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Let's get our coloured paper and draw a bird's head with a long neck like that and also a beak. And let's cut these out very carefully with scissors. Now remember, scissors are sharp, so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. There we go, there's the beak. And let's cut out the head very carefully, all the way along and round and down the other side. There we go, right, let's get some glue and stick the beak on. There it is, and now he needs some eyes. All right, come back here, you, that's it. There's one, and there's two. Oh, there we go. Right, now we need the pine cone, and hopefully that will stick in there, which it does. Now we need some feathers. Let's get some feathers stuck in. There we go, there's one in there. Ten one seconds. in there. Go on, in you go. One in there, and one in there. And just about enough time for one more. There! <laughs> Phew, that was close. But if you've got more than a minute, you can make other sorts of pine cone creatures. This one is made with a different coloured card and spotty feathers. Or how about this pine cone dog with a tail, neck and legs made out of pipe cleaners? <coughs> all right, all right, keep your cone on. Pine cone creatures made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Draw your bird's body and beak on two pieces of coloured paper. Then carefully cut them out. Stick the beak onto the body. Add the googly eyes. And finally, stick your head and the feathers into the pine cone to finish your pine cone creature. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? So, let's make a picture out of licorice sweets. What's it going to be? Can you guess? It's a fantastic zebra. I'm looking at the night sky through my telescope. <laughs> there's the North Star. And there's the plough. The night sky is so beautiful. I love it when the moon shines brightly and the stars twinkle down from up on high. <laughs> oh, look. Even wise old Mr Owl likes it too. <laughs> oh, and that gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Try making twinkling twigs and a pine cone owl. Sparkly. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. Some twigs and a pine cone. Some glitter and a pencil. Loopy PVA glue and a glue stick. Some coloured paper and an old plastic lid. Whoa! <laughs> now we also need some googly eyes and some air drying clay. Now we can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Here we are. There are two googly eyes, and here's the air drying clay. Now you can make your very own twinkling twigs. That's a perfect home for a woodland creature. Just start off by moulding 
your air drying clay into a plastic lid like this. Squeeze it down and push it all the way out to the edges. Now we're doing this because it's going to hold all of our twinkling twigs in place. Now we can start arranging our twigs. Now you can arrange them however you like, but how about we start with this nice big large twig here and push it into the clay at the front. Now we can start with some other twigs. How about we get this rather tall twig and push it in at the back? Now you'll notice that some of my twigs have dried leaves on them. Now these look great, it really adds to the effect. Choose as many twigs as you like, push them into the clay and leave it to dry. <laughs> then to make your twigs twinkle, stand your clay base on some old paper or an old tray and cover the whole thing in gloopy glue. And now for the fun bit, shake on some glitter. And once it's covered in glitter, shake any extra glitter off and leave it to dry again. Once your twinkling twigs are dry, you can make a woodland creature to go in them like this pine cone owl. So let's get some coloured paper and draw a curvy shape like this. There we go. Now on some different coloured paper, draw the same curvy shape but a bit smaller. And last but not least, let's get a piece of yellow paper like this and draw a triangle. Now this is going to be the beak for our owl. Now we can cut all of our pieces out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Now glue the pieces together to make the owl's eyes and beak like this. Then there's a finishing touch. Let's add two googly eyes. There's one and there's two. It's the face of our owl and we can stick it onto our pine cone with some gloopy glue. Finally, glue your owl onto the big twig at the front using lots of gloopy glue. You might want to hold your owl in position as it starts to dry. And when everything is dry, gently take the clay out of the lid like this. And there, look at it. Isn't it sparkly? And you can even try making other things twinkle amongst your twinkling twigs. How about making a lot of twinkling twigs with a pine cone and card fox and a little conker robin? Why don't you try making your very own twinkling twigs? A perfect present for your friends and family. <laughs> now, take a look at this. What a brilliant tissue paper snail. It's very easy to make and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured card, tissue paper, PVA gloopy glue, a pen, a paintbrush, scissors and some googly eyes. Use lots of different colours of tissue paper and scrunch it into little balls. Then use a pen to draw a picture. This is going to be a snail. Cover the snail's body with gloopy glue. And stick tissue paper balls all over it. Now cover the snail's shell with glue. Use different coloured tissue paper balls and stick them around the shell in a spiral shape. Then fill in the spaces on the rest of the shell in another colour of tissue paper. Cut out a mouth shape from some card and stick it down. Finally, glue on two googly eyes to finish your snail. Doesn't that look fantastic? What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Very impressive! Ow. Ow. Look at this! I've been sorting out all of my sea creatures. 
I've got everything here. I've got a whale, a very nice starfish, and a lobster. Ow! You little nipper, you. Well, I can't seem to find my favourite octopus, Ollie, anywhere. Now, where could he be? Eh? Ooh. Maybe he's over in the doodle drawers. Oh, I hope not. How am I going to find him in here? Ollie? Ollie, is that you? Well, I don't care if you and your friends are having fun in there. You can't stay in the doodle drawers. You need to go somewhere else. Somewhere fun. Somewhere colourful. Somewhere... Watery. <laughs> oh, this gives me a good idea, though. Why not make a mini fish tank from a box as a home for your very own sea creatures? Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a clear plastic box. Brightly coloured scouring pads and sponges. Some scissors and some gloopy PVA glue. And some felt tip pens. Whoa! Now we also need some googly eyes, and you can get those in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Right, here we go. Here are our googly eyes. There. Now, to make your very own sea in a box, like this one here, you'll first need to find a clear plastic box with a lid like this. Now, all sorts of things come in these plastic boxes, so have a good look round your local supermarket and I'm sure you'll find one. Now, this one looks really good, so let's get started. Let's take off the lid and bring in a brightly coloured scouring pad, because this is going to be the water. Now, let's put our lid on top and then draw around the lid with a felt-tip pen. There! Now we need to cut this shape out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Place this into your plastic box like this to make a watery background. Now we need to make some sand and some seaweed. Now you can make this out of whatever you like but I'm going to use these scouring sponges. We're going to very carefully snip out this middle bit. OK, let's get the scissors. Snip. If we unravel it, we'll make a sandy seabed. Now we can lay it into our box. There, brilliant. Now let's make some seaweed. So for that we need Ah, one of these green scouring sponges. Very carefully get our scissors and make a snip. Let's cut this end off first. There we go. Now if we pull this apart, it looks like seaweed. Very nice. Now how about a beautiful flower like this red one here? Let's get a red scouring sponge and again, pull it apart. And if we unravel it slightly, it's a beautiful flower. Let's put it in. I think down the bottom here would be good. There. Now it's starting to take shape, but something's missing. Oh, I know, a sea creature. Let's make an octopus. Now, for that, we'll need a thin coloured sponge, like this green one here. That'll look good. And let's get a felt tip in the same colour, a green one. OK, let's draw a nice big round head and some wiggly legs. And we can also add some extra details with our pen as well. Now, we can give our octopus a tongue 
by bringing in a tongue-coloured sponge, like this pink one here, and using a pink felt-tip pen to draw it. Then carefully cut these out. Now let's glue them together and add some googly eyes with some gloopy glue. Brilliant! There's our octopus. Let's put him in his nice new home. Fantastic. Now let's put the lid on. And there we go. Fantastic. But you don't just have to give a home to an octopus, it could be a starfish. This is made using a yellow sponge cut into a star shape. Or maybe some exotic fish. This is made using lots of different colours and types of sponge. Let's take a closer look. Why don't you have a go at making your own sea in a box? <laughs> Oh, hello, Sid. Whoa! <laughs> it's great in here, and the best thing about it is you don't get wet at all. It's minute make time. Come on! Right, it's minute make time, and here's what we're going to make today. A colourful keyring charm. Perfect to hang on your bag, belt or lunchbox. Now, to make one of these, you'll need a pipe cleaner, some plastic coloured beads, a key ring and a small plastic toy or button with a loop on the back of it like this. Now, do you think it's possible to make this? In just one minute? No way! Oh, well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock! Right, let's get our pipe cleaner and feed on our small plastic toy like that. That's the rhino. Let's put him around there once or twice. There we go. Brilliant. Now let's turn it over like that and start feeding on our plastic beads. I'm going to start with this small dark green one like that. There we go. And then put on one of these slightly larger light green ones. There we go. You can use whatever colour beads you like and whatever shape and size. Halfway there! Oh no. oh no, they're going everywhere. I've got to be... Oh no, I need a big one now. That's it. That goes on there, like that. Now another small one. Oh dear, I'm running out of time. There we go. And one more big one should do it, I think. All right. Oh no, I'm running out of time. Right, now I need the key ring loop like that. And then I just need to loop it round and round and round and round like that. There we go. A fantastic key ring charm. Hi. Now all we need to do is attach it to our backpack or our lunchbox. And if you've got more than a minute, you could make a football keyring charm in your favourite team's colours and a football button. Or even a multi-coloured key charm with a star at the bottom. A brilliant keyring bag charm made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Attach an old toy or button to the pipe cleaner. Then feed lots of beads onto the pipe cleaner from the other end. And twist on your keyring loop to finish your keyring charm. Why don't you try making it in a minute? <laughs> hey, it's minute make time. Come on. <laughs> It's Minute Make Time, and here's what we're going to make today. A bookworm. The perfect fellow to mark where you are in a book or a favourite page. Now, to make a bookworm, you will need a strip of card, some scissors, an old rubber glove, some cotton wool, a glue stick, some sticky tape and some googly eyes. <laughs> No, not these googly eyes. The sort of googly eyes that you find in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got them. Right. Here are our googly eyes. 
Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Not a chance! Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock! Right, the first thing we're going to do is get our old rubber glove and some scissors and very carefully cut off two of the fingers like this. There we go. Very careful. Nice. And then just give them a little snip. Right, now let's fill these with cotton wool. Here we go. There's a bit in that finger there. In you go. And then we need a bit in this finger here. There we go. Right, stuff it. I'm going to leave a little bit at each end because that's where we're going to put this, our strip of card. Now, if I bunch it all together there and get a bit of sticky tape, I can stick it down on that side. And then another bit of sticky tape for this side. Here we go. Bunch it together there. Faster! Faster! Stick down. There we go. And if you turn it over, yeah, it's looking good, looking good. Right, now I need some glue on this side here. There we go, where I can put the two googly eyes. There's one, and there's two. There, I've done it! That was close. Phew, that was close. But if you've got more than a minute, you could try some other bookworms. Like this one here, with spots. <coughs> or this one, with glittery stripes. Or how about... This one with fur. Bookworms made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Cut two fingers off a washing up glove. Stuff them with cotton wool and stick both ends to the piece of card. Finally, stick on the googly eyes to finish your bookworm. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Now, take a look at this. This is a fantastic picture of a dinosaur skeleton. It's great fun to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need some paper, a white wax crayon and three different colours of paint. First, let's have a practice on a dark piece of paper so you can see how to draw a dinosaur skeleton. Start off by drawing the dinosaur's spine. That's his back. Just draw a line of dots that get smaller towards the tail. Add a line of triangles for the dinosaur's spikes and curved lines here to make the ribs. They get shorter as they get closer to the tail. Then add a head with a horn on top and a mouth underneath. And don't forget the legs and feet. These look like three sausages in a line. Then add three more legs. Now we've had a practice, it's time to start the picture but this time on a white piece of paper with a white crayon. If you think that's a bit strange, don't worry, all will be revealed. Make sure you draw your dinosaur skeleton in the way we've practised. Now, stir a drop of water into your paint to make it nice and runny. Take the red watery paint and paint a strip at the top of the paper. Do the same with the orange watery paint underneath. It looks great if the colours blend together. Look, the dinosaur is starting to show through where the white wax crayon resists the paint. Now do the same with the brown watery paint. Carry on like this until you reach the bottom of the page. Then leave it to dry. Your very own dinosaur skeleton picture. And you can use this idea to make any picture you like. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that clever? Now have a look at this. Hello. Look what I found in the doodle drawers. Lots and lots of boxes. They're just asking to be made into something fantastic. So, Mr Box, what are we going to make with you today? It's up to you. No, I know. Boxes can't really talk. But just imagine if they could. Oh, that gives me an idea. <coughs> Let's make it. As well as cardboard boxes, we'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <coughs> some paint. <coughs> some sticky tape and some felt-tip pens. 
some card. And some fluffy pom-poms. Whoa! Now, to make a box puppet like this one here, have a look in your kitchen cupboards or in a supermarket for two cardboard boxes that are about the same size, like this. There. Now, we need to tear the flaps off both of the boxes at one end. Now, this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. There. When that's done, we can put one box on top of the other and line them up so both of the open ends are together. Now we need to put some bits of sticky tape in here to make a sort of hinge. There we go. Now we can put our fingers into one box and our thumb into the other. And if we lift it up and open and shut it, our box puppet will talk. Hello, I'm a box puppet. Brilliant. Now you can turn your box puppet into anything you like, but I think we should make this one into a donkey. <laughs> so let's start off by painting this grey. And when it's dry, you can paint the inside of the mouth black. Now it's dry, we can give our donkey some eyes. And when you're drawing eyes, it helps if you draw around something that's round, like the top of a glue stick. And there's two. Now let's add some droopy eyelids, and we can colour those in with a grey felt tip pen. Now let's add some black circles in the middle for pupils. And our donkey's eyes are ready to cut out. But be careful, because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Put some glue onto the back of your donkey eyes. And now we can stick these onto two fluffy pom-poms like these. Look at that! Fantastic! Now we can stick these eyes on top of our donkey's head. There! Looking good already, but our donkey needs some big floppy ears. Now, to make these ears, we need some more card. And we're going to draw, with a black pen, two pointy art shapes like this. Great! Now we can cut these out very carefully. Then paint them the same colour as your donkey's head. And when your ears are dry, draw a smaller arch inside each one. Now give them a bit of a squeeze to give them some shape. And now we can stick them onto our box puppet. There we go, looking good. But as a finishing touch, our donkey needs some sticky out teeth. Now, to make those, we will need a small square of card. And we're going to draw a line down the middle, then make a flap by just bending over a little bit of the edge there. We can put some glue on that edge, and this will fix it inside our donkey's mouth. Push it in there. Perfect! There he is! <laughs> what do you think? Good, eh? And you can make all sorts of different box puppets. Ooh! How about this dog? Using different coloured pom-poms to make it look like he's got a patch over one eye. Ooh! Or a sheep. Cotton wool makes an excellent fleece. Ooh, 
Ooh, oh, look at this lion using fake fur to make a bushy mane. <laughs> so why don't you try making two boxes talk by making a box head puppet? Look at this. I've made a tent. It's fantastic, isn't it? And I've got lots of camping supplies here. I've got a blanket, a torch, a drink and some biscuits. Yeah, well, us campers have got to keep our strength up on those long, dark nights. <laughs> I said those long, dark nights. Ooh, good job I came prepared. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. But I forgot to bring some new batteries. Ooh, what I need is a night light. That gives me an idea, you know. I said it gives me an idea. <laughs> a fantastic glowing firefly that helps you see in the dark. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> An empty plastic bottle. <laughs> Some white and black craft foam. <laughs> Some scissors and some sticky tape. <laughs> some string, a black pen, some pencils. And we need a glow stick. Now, if you haven't heard of glow sticks before, they're sticks that glow and people use them at parties. And you can buy them at a toy shop. I'll be back in a tick. Here we go. And here's our glow stick. Now, to make a firefly like this one here, we first have to draw two eyes on some white craft foam. Now make sure that these two eyes are together in one piece. Now let's add some dots in the middle with a black pen. Now we need to draw two wings. And then very carefully cut these shapes out. But be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh. <laughs> Now, with a black piece of craft foam, draw some antennae like these. It's a good idea to draw an outline with a coloured pencil first. Now we can cut this out very carefully. Then take a piece of string and tape it to your plastic bottle. Now we need to find our bottle top and stick our antennae to it. Now we need to make sure the bottle top is still able to twist open. Right, there we go. Yeah. Now we're going to stick our eyes on top and we do that by making a loop of sticky tape like this so it's sticky on all the sides. Go. And the eyes go on top, like that. There! Now we can attach the wings in the same way. Now, to make your firefly glow, get your glow stick and bend it until you can hear it snap. Then give it a shake. And it magically Glows! Now this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. Now we can put this inside our Firefly bottle. There we go, Mr Firefly. Put the lid back on. And now we can hang him up. And you don't just have to make one Firefly, you can make as many as you want and really brighten up the place. This one's made with a blue plastic bottle and brightly coloured wings. This one's made with a big brown bottle. And how about this one with green eyes and patterned wings? 
Aren't they brilliant? And they'll help you see in the dark. I said they'll help you see in the dark. What a fantastic effect. You're a bright spark, Mr Maker. Oh, thank you very much. I've got something to show you. Watch this. These are my footprints and they've got a mind of their own. Let's make a picture out of lolly sticks. Wow, wow. it's a grasshopper. It's Minute Make Time, come on! <laughs> yes, it's Minute Make Time and here's what we're going to make today. A jumbo lolly stick lizard. What a great way to use up all your old lolly sticks. Now, to make one of these, you will need a jumbo lolly stick. Also, four pipe cleaners, two white stickers, a black pen and some sticky tape. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get our lolly stick and then place two of these green pipe cleaners on there by bending them round into leg shapes. There's one and there's two. Right, now we need some sticky tape to fix these in place. There we go. There's one. Some more sticky tape, please. There's the other leg there. Brilliant. OK, now let's give him a tongue. We can just loop that around like that. That's looking good. Let's get some more sticky tape. Stick that down there like that. Brilliant. Now he needs a tail, so let's just wind that around the fingers like that. And then we bring it out, it's all curly. Brilliant. Let's get some sticky tape and stick it down. And then if we flip him over, he's looking good. Right, you just need to give him some eyes like that. There's one there and one on the other side. And then if I get a black pen, I can make dots on his eyes and dots on the rest of his body. There, I did it. If you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of lolly stick lizards. This one's been made with a different coloured jumbo lolly stick and has felt tip pen spots. Or how about adding some sparkly stars to your lizard with star shaped sequins and glitter? You can make any type of lolly stick lizard you want. Why don't you give it a go? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Again. I'm just painting a picture. I'm nearly finished. Ooh, I wonder who that could be. I better get cleaned up. All right, I'm nearly coming. Oh, oh no. Just the tick. Oh, oh. My beautiful picture. Now, oh, I'm coming. Hang on. Hang on. Right. Hello? Oh, I don't believe it. There was no one there. I've ruined my picture. And I've run out of wipes. Hmm. Hang on. This gives me a great idea. Let's try something. 
try making a surprising pitcher using the lid of an old packet of wipes. Oh, let's make it! As well as a plastic wipes lid, we'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. Some paper, card and scissors. Some paint and some paint brushes. White sticky dots, a pen, and a glue stick. Whew. Whoa! Now, to make a surprise picture like this one here, hey. you first need to take the lid off an empty pack of wipes. Now, this is quite tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. There we go. Now, let's bring in some coloured paper, open up our lid, and place it down on the paper, sticky side up. Now, we're going to get a pencil and draw very lightly inside this hole here. Now, let's put this paper to one side for a minute. Keep our lid here, but close it and put it sticky side up onto some card. Now, again, lightly with our pencil, we're going to draw along the four straight edges of this lid. Now, if we add four corners, we can join up these lines and make a rectangle door shape. Now, we need to cut this shape out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh, ooh. When you've cut out your door, put it to one side for a second and bring in some other card and our flap again and push it down, this time sticky side down, onto the card. Yeah. Let's bring our door shape back in. Here it is, and glue it on top of this front flap. Here, on there. Now we've got our door, we need the room to go around it. And you can colour it in however you want, like this. Let's paint our one. And now when it's dry, finish it off with some black pen detail. It looks like a room. It's got a carpet, a picture on the wall, and it's even been painted black inside the door. Now, let's draw a surprise to go inside here. How about a ghost with his arm opening the door? All right, let's do that on our coloured paper that we drew on earlier. Stick on two white sticky dots for eyes. And then we need to cut our ghost out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. So now we have our ghost. Ooh, let's glue him in the doorway. Ooh. Anyone in? That is surprising. So why don't you try some other ideas? Look at this. Oh, it's an elephant opening the door with its trunk. Or this one. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder who that could be. Only me. Ah! Oh, you made me jump, you little monster. <laughs> Look at this. Grandma Maker has sent me some stuff for the doodle drawers that she had in her attic. <laughs> Let's see what's in here. Oh, yes. Look at that. It's a photo of us on holiday at the seaside. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, what else is in here? Right, I better just put all this away very carefully. Right. Oh. Oh. Sorry about that. I slipped on this bubble wrap. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, bubble wrap. This gives me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making this fantastic octopus picture using a paper plate and bubble wrap. Let's make it, as well as some bubble wrap, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. A coloured paper plate. Some yellow and white paper. A garden gnome.
No, we don't need him. <laughs> Sorry, Norman. <laughs> Some gloopy PVA glue and a glue stick. A black pen and some sticky tapes. And a paintbrush and some red paint. Whoa! Now, to make a bubble wrap octopus, like this one here, we need to draw two circles that are the same size onto some white paper. Now, to help you, it's a good idea to draw around something, like a sticky tape roll. Now these are going to be the octopus's eyes, so let's add pupils with a black pen. Great! Now we need to get our yellow paper and draw some circles for the octopus's spots. Ooh. Now cut all of these circles out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, careful! <laughs> Next, take a coloured paper plate, like this red one, and stick your eyes and spots on. So now we've got eyes, spots, and even a little mouth that I've added with a black pen. All that's missing now are the octopus's tentacles. And of course, for the tentacles, we need the bubble wrap. But first, we need to make a painty mixture. And that's going to be half gloopy glue and half poster paint. I'm going to use red paint to match my paper plate. Yeah, that looks about right. Now let's give it a mix with a paintbrush. And then paint this painty mixture over our bubble wrap. Now it's a good idea to paint on the bubbly side. And when it's dry, like this, you can carefully cut it out into eight wiggly sausage shapes. These are going to be the octopus's tentacles. Now you can attach them to the back of your paper plate with some sticky tape. But make sure the tentacles are bubbly side down. There! Let's have a look. Fantastic! Now all that's left to do is to stick our octopus onto a piece of coloured card. But you don't have to make an octopus. Oh no, you can make anything you like. How about an elephant? It's got bubbly ears and a rolled up bubbly trunk. Or how about this handsome fellow with fantastic bubbly hair? Hey, he's not a bad looking chap, that one, is he? He's got fantastic bubble wrap eyebrows. Brilliant! <laughs> what the? All right, all right, Mr. Elephant. The elephant picture's really good, too. <laughs> oh, it's minute make time. Come on, everyone. <laughs> It's Minute Make Time, and here's what we're going to make today. A one-eyed monster! Aye, aye. Now, to make this one-eyed monster, you will need a feather, a pen, some scissors, some green card, and a googly eye and some air-drying clay that you can get from an art and craft shop. <laughs> I've got them. Right, I'm going to put my air drying clay down there at the moment and leave it in the bag. But here's my googly eye. Put that down there. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Not a chance. Well, I think I can, Toki. I will have to move very quickly. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, I'm going to get one big lump of clay and roll it into a ball 
and then squash it into the body shape of my monster. And then I'm going to get two smaller lumps of clay and roll them into small sausages. These are going to be the monster's legs. There we go, there are the legs, and there's the body. OK, looking good. Right, I'm going to get a feather now and stick that in the top there, and then give my monster an eye. Now we need to give him some arms, don't we? So for that, we can draw those on the side of this card here. There's one arm, there's two arms, and now I'm going to cut these out. Be careful! Don't worry, Toki, I'm being careful. Here we go. Oh, I'm running out of time. Right, I'm going to cut round here. There we go. Come on now. Don't fail me, scissors. Don't fail me. Come on, slow coach. I'm going as quick as I can, Toki. There we go. There's one in there and one in there. Ah, I've done it. Lucky, lucky. Hey, that was lucky. And if you've got more than a minute, you can paint your monster a nice bright colour. How about an orange stripey one? You can even make one with two eyes, like this blue spotty one. Don't I look great? One-eyed monsters made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Squash clay into a ball for the monster's body. Roll two sausage shapes for the legs and stick them onto the body. Stick a feather on top and then stick on the googly eye. Draw two arms on the coloured paper Cut them out and finally stick the arms into your one-eyed monster. Why don't you try making it in a minute? I've got something to show you. Watch this. These are my footprints and they've got a mind of their own. Go on then, off you go. Can you guess what the footprints are making? What could it be? Any ideas yet? It's an owl! Well done, footprints! It's Minute Make Time! <laughs> yes, it's Minute Make Time. Now, have you ever wanted your own pet, but you haven't been allowed one? Well, how about this? Look, it's your very own paper pet fish in his own tank. Now, to make this, you will need some scissors, a black pen, an empty plastic pot, some green tissue paper, some orange paper or card, some sticky tape, and some play sand that you can get from a toy shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got it. There we go, there's our play sand. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock! Right, let's put our play sand into our plastic pot like that. Let's shake it all out. Fantastic. And then, put this to one side, let's draw our fish. OK, he's going to look a bit like that. Let's give him a tail. Fantastic! An eye. A mouth and another little fin there. Now let's cut this out very carefully. But scissors are sharp, remember? So be very careful. There we go. Basta, there. Basta. Now, our fish is nearly ready, but we need to stick him into the tank. So let's make a little sticky roll of sticky tape just by rolling it up like that. There we go. Fantastic. And then this will stick to our fish and he will pop into the tank. Fantastic. Now I just need to tear this very quickly, this green tissue paper, like that. And then if I bunch it up together, it makes the weed to go in the back. There! Time! He's great, isn't he? And if you've got more than a minute, you could try different ideas. How about doing more than one fish? Or perhaps one with a pet crab. You'll have to be nippy to make that one. 
a paper pet in its very own tank made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Pour some play sand into a see-through plastic pot. Draw a fish and cut it out. Stick a rolled up bit of tape on the back of the fish and push it into the sand. Tear some green tissue paper for seaweed. Give it a twist and push it into the sand to finish your paper pet fish tank. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Oh. Let's make a picture out of cotton reels. What are the cotton reels going to make? It's a fantastic rocking horse. I'm just finishing off this picture of a dog. Here we go. There, all done. What do you think? It's not bad, is it? But it needs some extra magic. I just love it when art comes alive and leaps out off the page. <laughs> oh, no, my dog's leapt right off the page. I think he might have been barking mad. But I tell you what, he's given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a paper plate picture using clever folding to make your drawings really stand out. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. <laughs> some colored card and a pen. <laughs> a paper plate. A white sticker and a glue stick. And a pair of scissors. Whoa! Now, to make a plate picture like this one here with a super sea monster, you need to get yourself a coloured paper plate. Now, you can choose whatever colour you like, but I think this red one will look rather nice. Now, get a blue piece of paper or card and draw a round puddle shape like this. Now, this is going to be the sea. Now, cut this shape out very carefully, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh, ooh. Now, stick your C to your plate with glue like this. Now, to make the hedge at the back here, take a piece of green paper or card and draw a wobbly cloud-like shape like this. Now, very carefully, cut this shape out. Now we're going to turn this shape over and fold up the bottom edge like this. This makes a flap. And if we glue along this flap, we can stick our hedge to the plate. Now for the sea monster. For this, we need some monster colored card. And you can choose whatever color you like, but I think we should use yellow right now. Let's start drawing all our monster body parts. Now, remember to start your drawing at the bottom edge of your paper or card, because we're going to be doing some more folding later. Right, let's draw a nice big head shape. Now for the body, let's draw a half circle shape with another smaller half circle inside it. And of course, a tail shape. There, and when you're happy with all your monster body parts, carefully cut them out. And when you've cut out all your monster parts, why not give it some extra detail with a pen? You could do stripes, spots, or whatever you like, really. And don't forget to give your monster an eye with a white sticker and a black dot. <laughs> and why not add a smile? There we go. And when you're happy with all your monster parts, turn them over and once again fold up the bottom edge to make flaps. And when you've folded all your pieces and made all of your flaps, glue your monster into place. Oh. 
And when it's finished, it looks like this. Isn't it fantastic? And you could try some other standout pictures too. How about a car? It's made by cutting out a house, a bush and a car. Or maybe a ship at sea. It's made by drawing a boat, some waves and a sun behind them. Paper plate pictures, a real monster of an idea. Why, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> hey. Oh, oh it's Minute Make Time. Come on, everyone. <laughs> it's Minute Make Time. And here's what we're going to make today. A cotton bud sheep. Yeah. Look at him. He's fantastic. Now, to make a cotton bud sheep, you will need some cotton buds, some scissors, a sharp pencil and some air drying clay that you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> I've got them. There's my air drying clay. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, I think I can. Let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get two lumps of air drying clay like this and then roll them into balls. One's big and one's small. That's good. OK, now we need two cotton buds and very carefully I'm going to cut them in half. There we go. There we go. Right, and with the other two, I'm just going to cut off the fluffy ends. There they go. And then the other two will be very careful. There we go. Brilliant. Right. And I've also got a little bit left over there in the middle. Now, if I get that big piece of air drying clay and push the half buds in, these are going to be the legs. Halfway. Halfway already. Oh, no. There we go. Right. That should stand up. Brilliant. There's the body. Oh, come on, stand up, Mr. Sheep. There we go. And then with this bit, I'm going to push it in there because that's going to be the neck. Now, if I push the smaller ball on, there's his head. Right, now let's give him on, an ear catch. here. There we go. And an ear on that side. And then give him a little tail. There we go, like that. And now with a sharp pencil, I just need to give him a face. There we go. I've done it. Lucky, lucky, lucky! <laughs> Phew, just made it. And when it's hard and dry and you've got more than a minute, you can paint it like our little sheep here. And how about trying some other animals? You could try making a pink pig with a cotton bud snout. Or how about a chicken with a cotton bud beak? <laughs> cotton bud creatures made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Roll a small and a large ball of clay, cut two cotton buds in half, and with two more, just cut off the fluffy ends, leaving the middle piece behind. Push four buds into the large ball for feet. Use the middle piece as a neck and stick the head on it. Add two cotton buds for ears, one for a tail, and give it a face with a pencil to finish your cotton bud creature. Why don't you try making it in a minute? It's time to get messy. Watch this. What do you think it is? It's a super snail. Now, take a look at this. Yeah.
What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! This is a brilliant jungle picture. You don't even need a paintbrush to do it. Just paint and your fingers. It looks so good that you will be able to frame it. You will need some coloured paper, a black pen and lots of different coloured paints. Yellow, brown, orange, white and three different shades of green. Plus, there's one other important ingredient. Your fingers! You will need to start off with some dark green paint. But if you don't have any, it's really easy to make. Just add a small amount of black paint to an ordinary green paint and mix together. The more black paint you add, the darker your green will be. Just dip your fingers into the paint and dab them downwards on the paper like this to make the trees at the back of the jungle. And you can use a different coloured green to make even more trees. This is great fun, but it can get a bit messy, so give your hands a wipe in between colours. Now make the tree trunks with the brown paint. You can do this by dipping the side of your hand into the paint and printing it in the same way. This gives you a nice thick tree trunk. Now leave it to dry. For the leaves on the trees, you'll need some light green paint. If you don't have any, just add white paint to the ordinary green paint and mix it together. Make leaves like this. Now for the grass. Dab some light green paint along the bottom of the paper. Add a bit of dark green. You can even add some jungle flowers with yellow paint. And let's make a tiger to live in the jungle. Dab orange paint from your finger in a circle for its head. Add some ears. And now for the face. Add eyes by making two small white dots with your finger. Add yellow dots on the ears and cheeks. And when it's dry, use a black pen for the eye and mouth. All finished! A fantastic finger paint jungle! What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Very impressive. Now for something really special. Hey, hey, hey! It's Minute Maid time! <laughs> yes, it's Minute Maid time. And here's what we're going to make today. A springy puppet. Look, it's a wiggly worm. Now, to make one of these, you will need a long strip of paper, two small white stickers. Now, if you haven't got stickers, don't worry. You can always cut circles out from white paper. Some scissors, two drinking straws, a black pen and some sticky tape. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? You must be bonkers! Oh, good one, Toki. He's right, you know. I'm going to have to be very quick. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get our strip of paper and cut a rounded shape at one end. This is going to be the head. There we go, like that. And then at the other end, we're going to make it nice and long. That's going to be the tail. There we go. Right, now we're going to fold this into a sort of spring shape by folding it one way and then the other and then one way and then the other and then that way. It's a bit like making a paper fan. Brilliant. Now, if we open it up like that, we can get our white stickers here and put the eyes on. There's one and there's the other one coming now. There we go. Now, we need our black pen to put dots on for the eyes and draw on a mouth. And then if we turn him over, we can position our straws, get some sticky tape and stick them in place. Oh, I've got to be quick. Just a few seconds to go. I've done it. That was close. That was close. But if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of springy puppets. How about a sausage dog? It's got a dog's head and paws at one end and a tail and back legs at the other. Or how about a bendy crocodile? It's got a snappy mouth at one end and a crocodile's tail at the other. Whoa! Springy puppets made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Take a long strip of coloured paper. 
cut one end into a rounded head shape and the other into a pointed tail. Fold the body one way, then the other, then the other to make a spring. Use white stickers and a black pen to give your puppet eyes and a mouth. Stick on your straws at both ends and your springy puppet is ready. Why don't you try making it in a minute?